Zara. Zara, thanks for the raid, buddy. Bellatro is a problem. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. It is a great problem, and I love having that problem. It's so good. <laughs> nice balls. Nice. Uh, give me a second. I'm finishing up a few things before we uh, get rolling here. Yeah, I guess y'all can just hang out with me. I'm editing the release notes for the uh Yeah, there's the there's the rate alert, nice. Um Oh buddy, go lay down, go get some rest. Go get some rest. Uh alright, I'm going to Turn on the big screen. Uh, anyway, welcome to Firebot Friday, everybody. Um, let's see. Let's move this down so I have it off the screen. Um, hello, hello. Louie, go, uh, go have date night, buddy. I love you. But go have date night. Um, anyway, hi to Louie and Balls and Grandpa Celery. Dennis, Zara, of course, coming in with the raid. And Tom, who's... Well, Tom's here anyway. As is tradition. Uh, let me go real quick. There we go. In case anybody shows up. All right. Uh, so today I'm working on uh, version 5.62 beta 1. I'm going through the release notes now. Uh, we'll go over everything in some detail. We talked about some of this last week, but we are doing uh, we're doing some stuff and some things. There he is. There he is. Hello, Vivian. Uh, all right, so let's see. Well, yeah, when the sub sound was playing, like, audio completely died? Oh, buddy. No, Dennis, you didn't give me the idea to refactor usernames. You were just like the final catalyst, buddy. <laughs> Hi, CKY. Here, uh, would you would you like me to play your your sub sound again, Viv? I will do it again just for you, just because I love you. Let me, uh, you ready? Are you ready? You ready? Are you ready? No, you are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, here we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. I got it. I got it. Quack and such. Yes. Um... Yeah, balls. It's gonna stay. It's just deprecated now. Yeah, it'll still continue to work the way it has been. It's just, it's uh, it's deprecated. So you can change it over time. Yeah, Notepad plus plus is good for that. Uh, I use VS Code since I have it anyway. I just open the folder and do like a full folder search and replace. Same thing you'd do in Notepad plus plus. Oh, let's see what we got here. Um.
Let's see. Um. Yes, see your code, but you no. Know, listen, Arb, whatever works, buddy. Whatever works best for you. Also, hi, Arb. Good to see you. <clears throat> Oh, balls, I'm sorry in advance for having the same setup as CKY. Let's see. Actually, let me keep that because that's the PR. Oh, let's see. I'm going to have a Let me just make sure I forget what the Is it like this? I forget what the The whole v5 folder on git God. Um, what is it? I can never remember. I guess I can go and look in the other releases. No, thank you. Oh, it's inside the... It's inside the bracket. Like that, yes, okay. No, I'm not, I'm not putting, I'm not putting my, my Firebot config in, in Git. Love you. There's a bean. And that's just not my style. CKY says hi, bean. She says hi. Let's see. Do do do. -do. Okay. I get ignored the auth file. Oh, he, I'm sure he did. Okay. Yeah, see? There you go. Um. Oh, Viv says he loves you. He does love Viv, it's true. I checked.
Mram. All right, there we go. I know. This time. Account for this. That's a good, uh, that's a good call, Dennis. I didn't think about that. I think it ha I think it happens before, though. I don't know. We'll go and see. I think it's... Mm, that's a good... Shit. Son of a bitch. Ah, uh, alright, well, I'm gonna have to rebuild the beta. It's not, it's, it's a, it's a race condition CKY, so it's. Yeah, no, this is, I'm, I kind of fucked up on this one. Fuck. Fuck. All right. Well, I've I've broken stuff, so we'll get there when we get there. Um, because I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna end up saving these notes, but I will rebuild the beta. Um. All right. Let's go. Tune in seven for more. Actually, Viv, it's funny. Tune in seven for more because I'm going to be doing it again tonight. Not this, but breaking stuff. Um. Shit. Uh. Okay. Gotta get my formatting right, like... Twenty minutes in and you broke it. Twenty two weeks in and you broke it. Yeah. Broken section in the notes now. No. Not yet. <laughs> uh it's still technically an improvement. Um Let's 
since 2420, yeah? Yeah, okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. Did I deny your PR yet? No. Vegeta, no. Vegeta, yeah. No, you cannot turn off my lights. You're not allowed. You can turn off my lights later. Okay. Uh, I added this. Fix that. Fix that. Fix that. Hi, Alf. How are you? Yeah. Yeah, I... Yeah, it's because I turned it off, CKY. Yeah, also, I don't want Lolly to be happy. That's also correct, yes. All right, I, oh God, this is gonna bother me now so much. God damn it, I'm glad you brought that up, Dennis. But it's bothering the shit out of me now. I stop that. Oh, oh, Dennis, look at Dennis out here going to fucking TwitchCon. Look at this guy with his TwitchCon badge. Dennis is going to TwitchCon in, in TwitchCon Europe. Look at you, buddy. Oh, uh, let's see. That's what I was going to put in. Okay. Got that. Got that. Um.
Yeah, we've been, uh, oh boy. We have been, we have been, yeah. It's been a thing. Um. Uh, do, 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 do. Display names on Twitch. Localized. Beautiful. That's what I want. Okay. Let's play names with spaces. Um, yeah, the whole thing is messed up, Dennis. The whole, the whole like display name thing is messed up. Do, 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 do. Anyway, uh, uh, balls, if you're still here, I took care of that spammer account. Cool. Oh. Okay, let's see. Um, twenty four seventeen. So let me go. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for letting us know. Okay. Yeah. My God. <laughs> Subscriber, subscriber rolls. Okay. Spammers never learn? Nope, they don't. Hmm. That's, that's actually, that's true, Balls. Like, usually we're the ones to get hurt first, but then, like, for some reason they keep getting you, like, specifically you. It's like, <laughs> like they're looking for you. Uh, let's see. Is your long name for old chick? Uh, go separate. Yeah. 
We have no API changes this time around. Uh, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to save the draft of this. Let me go back, because I want to review this, and there's I need to figure out how I'm going to handle... Uh, wow, this is... Fuck. This is a problem. This is a real, like, chicken and egg thing. Uh, nobody in their right mind misspells balls. Oh, but we do. Oh, man, this is... Man, I'm really... Uh, I don't know how to handle this. Fuck, I really fucked this up. I hate it, but I may have to back out my change to the chat. Are you egg then chicken? Maybe. Shit. Yeah, but there's no way to defer the role. No. No, Dennis, that, that ship has sailed. Nope. That's the whole point of this release, Dennis. Uh so here's the thing, Alf. Um let's let's talk about chat real quick. Uh by deferring runtime. Oh, um, Uh, I mean, I guess I could put in a thing for it to where we check the streamer account. All right, let's explore the problem. All right, so here's here's what's changing with chat, Alf. Um, so today in Firebot, okay, we have our here. I can hide the. Let's just show the, the chat feed for a minute, um, just to not distract. So we have a, a connection to Twitch's IRC servers so that we can get our chat feed, right? And in a lot of cases, send chats. We, in the upcoming version, uh, we no longer use Twitch's IRC connection to send chats. There's a couple of things at play here. One, we have three connections to chat. Um, so we have the IRC for the streamer. We have IRC for the bot purely so the bot can receive whispers. That's it. And then we have a second connection for the streamer to go outgoing, which means the streamer will send a message on the outgoing. The incoming connection will actually receive that message and process the streamer's chat like a command from any other user so that the streamer chats get actually processed the way they're supposed to be. This is something that we fixed a couple of versions ago. Um, chat is eventually moving over to event sub for receiving. We don't have that in place yet. So for receiving in this version, we're still using IRC, which means we still have two IRC connections, one for the bot receiving whispers and one for like the, like everything happening in, uh, in chat for the streamer and the streamer receiving whispers and like events and all of that kind of stuff. Like there's a lot of stuff that we use the chat IRC connection for today in, um, however, Twitch has updated to where you can now send chat messages over their rest API, which means we just send a post request to the, an endpoint. It's like send a chat message. And for what we do, that makes a lot of sense, right? Because we're doing a lot of those requests, those rest requests to Twitch today 
for looking up user information and um, subscribers and moderators, VIPs, all that kind of stuff. Anything that's in and around the, the streamer's channel and any of the viewers that are in the streamer's channel, we do a lot of that hitting the API today. So changing the chat to move to be over rest works because that eliminates a connection that we have to IRC so that eliminates one breaking point because the rest connection is a lot better because it's it's a single on-demand call as opposed to like an open socket connection that goes back and forth. Um, and it's one fewer of those connections that can break, right? So the problem with that is in this version of Firebot, we had to add specific user roles. Oh, that's, that's yeah. That's a friend of mine from uh, Everwind's community. Um, so the, the, the problem is in order to use the chat over the rest endpoint, we had to add a new OAuth scope. We had to tell, add a new way to say, hey, uh, user, I want to, my application to be able to do this thing because it's different and Twitch had to make it different. It's a pain in the ass. Um, which means when we start up Firebot, we do a, oh, the ad break's starting. Shit. Um, oh, you don't have, okay, okay. Uh, so when we do, uh, when we start up Firebot, we check your creds and we store all the OAuth scopes that we have for your connection to Twitch versus the ones that we need. So if we ever update them in Firebot, we check the list. If they don't match, we log you out and say, hey, your account's out of date. We need you to log in again, which is what's going to happen in 562. The problem becomes, as Dennis pointed out, we also want to try to... Everyone, please control yourselves. This is a mature party. And... No! Hi, Barry. Oh, Barry, thank you for the raid, buddy. Uh, welcome into everybody coming from Choking by Thighs or Barry's community. Uh, some of you do know me. I'm Zunderscore. Uh, I'm a variety streamer, and today I'm actually working on Firebot stuff. But hello, Pablo, and Ever, of course. And Boo Barry. Welcome in, everybody. Uh, hold on a second. Sorry, I know that y'all are coming in in the middle of an ad break. Um, that will go away in a second, hopefully. We've got about 30 seconds left. Uh, I mean, Twitch is going to run ads one way or another, so I figure if I can at least have some control over it, i do what I can. Um, but, as me, oh, Jesus Christ. She's, God damn it, Barry. God damn it, Barry. Uh. Barry, how was Valorant, buddy? How was Valorant? I hope it went well. Well, that's okay, balls. It's, you know, it's fine. It is what it is. God damn it, Barry. Yours are all Spanish. I get a lot of Spanish on uh, ads here, but uh, in fairness, you know, being in Florida, we've got a lot of Spanish speaking folks in the area, so it makes sense. Um, so anyway, um, so the, uh, the problem becomes with us like, Hello. hi Liz. Um, but the pro the, the the issue is that we log you out if the like the permissions that we need don't match up with the ones that we already have, but we need you to be logged in for the migration to take place. So I have an idea. I have an idea, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the release notes as they are right now. I'm going to 
Copy those. I'm going to make a gist for them. Okay. Beautiful. All right. And I'm going to save. Yeah. Okay. I don't care. It's just, it's, it's there to hang on to it. Um, you apparently an unfollowed scrub. Listen, buddy, it happens. It's, it's fine. It happens. Of course, ever. Of course. Uh, all right, we'll come back to that. So here's my idea. Do I have account access here? Yeah, yeah, Dennis. I I know. I I don't need. That. Thank you. I I mean, I know what's going on. I know. I know what's happening and what the what's going to happen because of it. I I just let me get let me get there. Okay, let me just let me get there. I'll get there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm in the middle of working through it. And so, like, I'm, I'm going to fix it right now. Somebody thought of someone you would follow? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. So the way I want to logic this is I want to put this into a loop until they're logged in and like check it like every second, I think. So what I'm going to do is because I know it will log us out first before we get to this point because it's all async and we await everything. So when I get here, I know this is going to like actually break. This is going to be broken first time. So um you got beef sausages, that'll work. That'll work. Um Ah. Let's give it a five second. That takes a while. Okay, so here's what's going to happen here. Yeah, it's 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 kind of fucky wucky. 
Dennis because it's like it's weird. So it's fine. I'll. Uh, here's yeah. Any lazy hamburgers with them? Put them on some ciabatta tomorrow. Mmm, ciabatta. The model from more blender. Oh no. Oh, CKY. Listen, it was bound to happen, right, buddy? It was bound to happen. A lot of for lunch. You found out. And it came in. $3. Oh, oh, Liz. I've been there, though. I know that feel. Uh. I'm, I don't think I need a log inside the loop. I think that'll get a little too, I think that'll be a little too much, Alf. Like. It's, uh, it's like, it's not going, once they log in, because this always gives us this get accounts will always give us the most current account information. And once the streamer is logged in, then we will know that they like, we will, we will continue moving forward. Now that I can do. Okay, so that way... I mean, if we never see the migrate message, we know that it didn't go, but <clears throat> that's fine. At least it's... It gives us something on either side of it, which I'm fine with. So here's what I'm thinking. That's the only thing we add here, which is fine. That's what we need. Yeah, yeah, I think I think one after is good. I think one after is fine. Because we do... So load custom roles happens when ready, okay? So here's the workflow. We come all the way up here and we refresh that, we, where's our update account cache? Register Twitch auth providers. Yep, so there's the auth providers that we register. Is this async or not? Oh, it doesn't need to be async. Where do we validate? Validate Twitch account. Oh, that's an async. Oh. CKY, that's why it's a while loop, buddy. That's why it's a while loop. We only check, we... It gives you five seconds, and then if you're not logged in, it just waits another five seconds. That's a while loop. 
I'm fully locked up, and you have no idea what the loop did. Did brick it? And well, I mean, it's a it's a five second. That's why I'm making it like five seconds and not like an immediate thing where we're checking like pounding at it. Because like all this does is like this is the migrate loop. I mean, if you don't have any custom rolls, that's going to happen. So, uh, no, you're fine. You're fine, CKY. My great legacy custom rolls runs on Splash and not Main. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to figure out where I can do this. I mean, technically, it should work, though. Wait, we don't do validation. We don't do the validation until the main screen is displayed. Yeah, invalidation happens on load of main, so at this point it should be fine. If there's no login, it'll deadlock. You mean it'll deadlock right here, Dennis? Okay, it'll... But if you, if someone doesn't log in... Yeah... It, that it'll it'll just sit in this loop forever but they will eventually log in if they're going to use like like they're going to eventually log in and use the software so if either either they're not using firebot and, or they will eventually break out of this loop this is in when ready oh shit no, now I, I see what you're saying now. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Never mind. I got it. I got it. But we don't log them out. Okay, so this, this will only happen in a couple of scenarios. One, it will only deadlock if they are... They have a previous custom roles file. They are logged out when Firebot starts. So when it starts, if they're if they don't have the the old custom roles file, doesn't matter. If they're logged in, doesn't matter because we don't log them out until after this point. So it's only if they were logged out before they they closed and they have the old custom roles file. That's the only situation where this would deadlock. No, in validation happens in main in main window. So we don't validate until main window loads, and then we do validation because we need to send data to the UI to indicate to the user that they need to log in again. So like, yeah, that's the only time that we do it. We don't do the validation of the OAuth scopes until the main window. Until main window loads. That's like one of the last things that we do. Like we do that after we do the update check. Liz, you and me both, pal. You and me both.
Log in waiting. If we experience the error while trying to migrate to the DB, show UI error once in main window. Yeah, I suppose we could do that. Uh, I mean, at this point, we don't need this. So, yeah, this will be fine. Damn it. I mean, it's good to think about, but... That's very fair, Liz. It's not a... Warder, it's just like... Dennis brought up an important point. So we had to go through to make sure everything was good before we, like, messed with everything. Yes, we did. We did. Um, we both, we coded ourselves into a corner. That's okay. Oh, yeah, balls, for sure. This is two weeks in the breaking. <laughs> But you know what I can do? Okay, so then let's go here. Oh yeah, I've been, like CKY, like, me and him have been talking on the side about this shit, it's like, oh my god, like every little detail we've been going back and forth on. <laughs> Breaking the bot jokes? No, it's fine, Liz, it's fine. It's fine. For your stuff, this should be fine. This is, this is, like, we're breaking things, but like, it's just, we're, we're fixing things that have been long-standing stuff. Long on state changes. Force it to run again. And checks again and runs it if it was not run. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to have a UI. Let's go to my services. Let's go to the. Where's the role service? Do we not have a do we not have a role service? I thought we did. Viewer roles, there it is. Viewer roles. Alright, so Okay. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna go service dot check for legacy custom roles equals function uh Fire event? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we do, we do Liz, like, anything that we work on, I run that code, like, I never run release Firebot code, ever. I never run the code that's out in the world. I always run pre-release stuff. I always run dev stuff. Yeah, like, I'm running dev stuff. CKY is always running bleeding edge stuff. Like, I will check in changes. I will make a change, test it on my system, check it in. CKY will grab it. He will test it. Dennis will grab it. He will start testing it. Like, it's we do a lot of this stuff. Like, we've got all kinds of, like, we, we put this thing through a lot of paces as best as we can before... Yeah, yeah. Dennis runs dev stuff in production. I'll, my stuff is always dev stuff running in production. Like it's yeah. We do a lot of testing. There's we can never catch everything, but we do a lot of of pre-release testing before we even think about putting out a beta. Like this stuff that I've been working on. CKY and I have been running this code for two weeks.
Um, what's in the... Don't need whole word. Shero error modal. Okay. Is it utility? Is it just utility? Where is it? We need to add utility service here. Okay. Hi, Oshi. Uh, we're working on, we're gonna release the um, 5.62 beta today, but we are doing a little bit of cleaning some stuff up just to make sure some things are are working how does it work it literally works by name dennis literally by name like not even kidding like it will it will go in it will check the names of the parameters and it will it will do it by name yeah it's uh let's see let's find another example of this Okay. Fire event is how is our get data back, right? No. Yes, isn't it? Then how the hell do we get? Oh, it's fire event sync. God damn it. I hate that there's seven different names for all this shit. Yeah, async, sync or async will do it, but in this case, we just need sync because it's just synchronous anyway. Uh, a nail has been damaged and it hurts. Yeah, that's that happens. Okay, so let's look and see what our changes are now. We come here. Uh, we need to go to app main. And... It's all of that stuff. So let's, that's, does app run it? Okay, that's. This is the app run. Uh. I did that correctly, right? Yep, okay, so as legacy custom roles equals fire the event. If it has legacy custom roles, we show the error modal. Okay, I think that's fine. <laughs> yeah, sounds like CKY yelling at you. That's also, that's also correct, yes. 
balls are you putting names in your are you putting spaces in your function names you stop doing that stop doing that um see now look what you've done balls you got dennis all riled up we don't need him riled up as it is Okay. Chaos, also chaos. Try random caps next time. But <laughs> Dennis, I need toxins. For those really dramatic functions. Yeah, yeah. Oops. Okay. Full caps are good, actually, because it makes things stand out. Oh, my God. In JavaScript and TypeScript, yes, CKY, absolutely agreed. In C sharp, they should be Pascal case. C sharp should have a capital F there. But but listen, I'm getting we're getting off the subject. Item data, item ID, item name, ID. Data, that's just it's just JSON. Listen, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So we'll have a thing here to check for legacy custom roles to see if it exists. Fine, great. We come down here, when we do the migration, only if the file, the old file exists, if they're not logged in, we say, hey, we're not able to migrate custom legacy roles. Okay, that's fine. I don't even mind a little bit of yellow code. Hi, Carsis. Hi, buddy. How are you? Architecture allows you to view all caps without stress. That's true, Carsis. That's true. In architecture, fucking everything is all caps because it can't be wrong. The last thing you need in architecture is somebody thinking an I is an L or vice versa, and then everything is fucked. Fritz, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you. Chili's queso is red. Wait, what? That's... Liz, you just described salsa. <laughs> it's like dark orange. Oh, that's... I mean, how much, how much pepper are they putting in this thing? Uh, we go today despite poor sleep. Yeah, I feel that. I've been there. 
It's we're we, we're getting better. We're getting better around these parts. I mean, by we, I mean me. Okay. Okay, there was an issue. Firebot ran into an issue while migrating your custom roles to the new format. Please make sure your streamer account is logged in, then restart Firebot to try again. If you continue to receive this message, please reach out for support in our Discord. Okay, that's, I think that's a good message. That's that. That's our, we add our utility service there, which is good. We have viewer role service, which we have up here. I guess we can move it up. Oh, wait. The new Eval.js stuff? Yeah, uh, that one has something that's been like talked about and in the works for a really long time. Um, like, Reject did an amazing job with that. He did an incredible job. Kill off, kill rolls. Ice bear needs it for everyday hustling. <gasps> Script warrior, buddy, what is going on? It's good to see you, pal. Thank you for twenty-three months. Holy shit, it's been almost two years. Holy shit, pal. How's your Friday going, man? I might just put this in part of. I might just put this as part of load custom rolls. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to put that there. No, not the watch page. Where the heck am I? There. I think I'm just going to put that there and then pull this out. Uh nope. I think that's better. Living in the clouds. I know how it is, buddy. I know how it is. Don't need that anymore. Which means that main hasn't changed. So we just make this as part of the load. <clears throat> Only way to fix that is to kill rolls. No. No, like, when we do the migration, we kill the old roll file. <coughs> we go through all of them, and at the end of it, we delete it. Like, if everything else works... If everything else works, we delete the, the file, and then it's done, and then that message doesn't pop. <clears throat> so this happens on the splash screen. This runs on main screen load. By this point, because we've awaited this, we have waited for this to go through and finish its thing. So by the time we get here, then we should be fine. We should be absolutely fine by this point. If we're not, then something has happened and we have like, we have an error, we have some shit that has gone down, right? But we check to see if they're not logged in, we say, hey, this doesn't work. And there we go. For legacy role migration, bypass the auth requirement if there are no roles inside. If you have... Uh... I mean, I guess I can move this down.
God damn it, Dennis, where were you with all this good feedback two weeks ago? <laughs> Hi, Gadget. Yeah, man, we're using the DOS theme today. Listen, I, it was in the expert chat, and I told you what I was doing. You were here last week when I talked about it. And shut the hell up. <laughs> feedback, imagine, gadget, imagine feedback, imagine. Dennis, I'm just giving you shit. You know that. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We will check to see if there are any things in the legacy custom roles file. If there's not anything, we don't care. We just delete the file. Okay. So if there are no keys in the legacy custom roles, we know there are no legacy custom roles. Actually, I'm going to move this outside of this. And we're going to put this up here. Yep. Okay. That's fair, CKY. That's fair. Okay, <clears throat> so we come here, undetected, starting migration, we come down here, we grab the database, if there's more than, if there's something in the database, then we check for the login and do all of that stuff, otherwise, if there's nothing in, the, in there, we don't care, we delete the file, we go on our merry way, done, done, don't supply it. Lose the privilege of complaining when something you want isn't there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Gadget. Yeah, I can... I I identify with that very much so, and the, uh, the, like, Windows Insider stuff. Like, I know a lot of folks on that team at Microsoft, and they feel this too, because it's like, well, how come you didn't do this? Did you file feedback on it? Well, no. But I figured you should, should know. How are we supposed to know if you didn't file feedback on it? We can't know the thing if you don't tell us the thing. Well, now you're very close to your sandbox. Yeah, see? See, get I know. <laughs> oh. Oh, God damn you, Vivian. Damn you, Viv. How dare you? I know, Warder. I know. 
I know. Yeah. Listen, we we take feed we take feedback to heart. Feedback is important. We this is why we do a lot of the stuff that we do is based on people's feedback. That's why we have so many things that we like go through the issue log. That's like, all right, what are the stuff we're gonna do? Like so much of the stuff that we do is based on the stuff that's in the issues log on GitHub. You know, there are certain other things that we come up with and it's like, hey, there's like a cool thing for us, you know, that we want to do. Like, you know, when Reject came up with the idea for the watch page, right? Like this, where is it? Like the watch page isn't, you know, something that, that like the users necessarily asked for. This is something that, you know, one of the devs came up with and then we got together and made it work because we thought it was cool and because we wanted to, you know, know who the hell's streaming using Firebot because that's cool. And now the users really like it. I think it's great. I think it's so cool. Like I can come on here and I like see people from our community that I know that are here, like Sightless Combat. Like Sightless Combat is a low vision user who gives us so much great feedback about accessibility in Firebot, especially for screen readers type stuff, right? Sightless gives us so much great feedback, and now I can be like, oh, I know when Sightless is live, because I can't follow everybody. It's just not possible, right? Like, there are limits to how many people you can follow on Twitch, and, like, I'm, I just, I can't follow everybody, because that's too much for my brain to handle. But, like, being able to come in here and, like, see Sightless is live, doing, like, playing a game, that's so cool, you know? But, like just being able to come in here um, and just, you know, Brutal Sue. We get a lot of great feedback from Brutal Sue in the Discord. Like, I see all kinds of people that are in here. There's Nico is here. Like, I know a lot of people that are on this page these days just from knowing them in the Firebot community, and now I remember to go and check out their stuff because I know when they're live, I can see it on the page. It's just so cool. Is this how I'm able to see people when I'm picking a raid target? No, Gadget. I'm I'm very particular about the people I raid because I like to raid people that I know. Um, I just, I get nervous about raiding new people. Because when I raid someone, that's basically me endorsing someone else. And I'm, I'm extremely gun shy about doing that when I don't know someone so I don't want to I don't want to raid someone and then they turn out to not be someone that necessarily aligns with like me or my community's values um and then that's something that I have to address with my community and be like hey sorry shouldn't have done that mm, not you know No, watch doesn't show our fo my follows. No, firebot.app slash watch shows everybody who is currently live on Twitch who is using Firebot and has opted in to the feature to feature their app on the website. So everybody who is live on Twitch with this option enabled right here, feature my stream on firebot.app, that's who's on this page. So these aren't people that I follow. I don't follow most of these people. Like a couple of them I do. Like uh where like Thor, I follow them. Uh Nico, I follow Nico. Um, you know, so like a couple of these people I do follow. Um but in this page is purely people who stream and are running Firebot with this option enabled. That's it. That's all, that's all it is. Yeah, it's on the Firebot website, not in my instance, not in my particular instance. This is on the Firebot website. So if you go to firebot.app, you can see there's a watch live button up here, and you can go here and see all of the people who are streaming right now using Firebot. Pretty neat. I like it. Yeah. And like I said, that came out of like um one of our one of our other devs, uh Reject. He was like I want to watch somebody. I don't know who to watch. And he was like, I'm annoyed because I want to, like, I don't want to go through the list because we've got like 2,200 people in the Discord. I don't want to go through the list and see who's streaming. And also, 
not everybody marks that they're streaming on on Discord. Um, so like, he's like, I just want to click a button and see who's streaming. So we made a thing where we can click a button and see who's streaming. So it's it's pretty great. Yeah. All right. Anyway. All right. Let's get back to this fix. Um. Fix rolls. All right, so here's let's let's see here. We here's what here's our updated logic flow. Okay. We we say we're going to start the migration. We come down here. If there are custom roles in the like in the the legacy file. We go through it. If there's not, we don't care. We delete the file. <laughs> Done. Um, does this actually create the new roles database if we do? If we have no records to import, yes. Because what happens is, even if we don't have the new one, we come in here and when we when we get the custom roles database, it creates it right here. So after the migration, even if it doesn't create it, it creates it here. Um, and then we do our thing. And if custom roles data is not nothing, we set our custom roles to it. Otherwise, we use the default value, which is just an empty object. So, um, Are we fussing around the roles? Are we? Yes, Warder. Um, uh, I will go over. I'm going to go over the changes in a minute. I do want to get this fix in and get the beta rebuilding first, uh, because this is this is an important like thing that we need to do for user feedback. Um, but yes, we are we are fussing with roles. So I will I will go over all of that in just a minute. Um, Alf, thanks for hanging out, buddy. I hope work goes well for the rest of the day. Um, yeah, Gadget, all of our stuff is stored in a in app data, roaming, Firebot, V5. So all Firebot data that we use for like profiles and stuff is all stored here. And then each profile is in here from the main profile. And then roles, custom roles are stored in a file inside of here. So it's all stored on disk in the user data. Hi, kitty. Your headphones yeed their last haul last night. Oof. Pour one out for your headphones. Yeah, water. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, CKY Dennis. Just sanity check. This look good to you too. We show the modal if it still exists. It shouldn't exist by that point. Are we all good here? Logitech G733s. Oh, those are nice. Twitch teammates considered custom roles. Um, order if you are on a fish an official stream team on Twitch. No, no. There's a separate built-in role for that. Okay. All right, let's uh, stage those two. We're gonna leave those down here. Uh, I'm gonna push that to, I'm on V5. All right, let's go back and let's rerun the action. I wonder if this is going to be mad at me because we already have an existing one. I don't know. We're going to find out. It might because it doesn't work the same way as the nightly. Might have to delete that release and start over.
Mecha version has corresponding tag. Okay, but so we don't have a tag, so it's fine. We don't tag on the nightly, so that makes sense. Um, half a dozen people with a bunch of scripts. Which even that makes it easier to walk through each one updating their shit. No, you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to. Um, because like we check the teams. I think we check check teams by name because or by their like internal ID on Twitch, because those don't change. Uh, in fact, I can tell you. Team roles manager. Uh, there's the team ID, and there's the members, and when we check to see if someone's a member of a team, get all team roles for viewer, we check the teams to see if they're in, uh, in there, and if they are in there, we add the, we add it to their team, so... They can be renamed, but people don't rename them. Yeah, but I we I think we track it by. I think we track it by ID anyway. I think. Project products is like one hundred thirty eight dollars. Discount there on site. Only pay forty four. Ooh, forty four freedom doubloons. I'm using that kitty. I'm stealing that. I'm stealing that. No order. It's fine. Listen, I we get it. Like managing, helping people manage their stuff. It's a big responsibility, and like it's it's tough. That's why we try not to break things too much when we break them. It's just some of these things needed to be updated, and that causes some unintentional sort of side effects, right? So it's just it's just the nature of it. Um, so while this is building, let's go over the changes. Um, We'll talk more about the specific changes to usernames, the username variables, and like the role management, but let's go over stuff first. Uh, we talked about this some last week. Custom roles have been revamped, okay? So we're doing how we handle roles under the uh, under the hood. We, were, we now track them by their user ID. Um, we have been tracking them by either username or display name, which can break. Um, when we track them by user ID, it is much, much better long-term, so. Oh, Kitty, thanks for the lurk. I love you bunches. I'm, congratulations on getting new head, new, new headphones. Um, so yeah, so we now track viewers in roles by their user ID, okay? Um, users with localized Twitch display names. So in Japan, or for Japanese, Korean, and Chinese users, you can have a localized display name that is different from your, and like, like of course the, the screenshot that's in the help article doesn't load. Um, but you can see here, like this one for instance, like there's, this is a Japanese character name, okay? If you have, if you're in one of those three languages, you can set up a display name that's completely different than your, actual username um so that can uh that can break in certain instances because this doesn't directly correlate to a username um so we now show localized versions so to give you an idea Let's turn on my viewer list for a second and scroll down and look, we have a known bot. So we have a known bot here that has a localized display name, but we display their actual username underneath and we also show it in the viewer list. So I know it's a little out there, but we display it just like Twitch displays it in chat and we showed this some uh, the other day with Dennis and his, Dennis has an alt um, that we can't write like the bot. I mean, whatever, they're there. So, um, yeah. So we show that in a lot of places. Actually, do I have it in my custom roles? Uh, I have a test role. Yeah, so you can see here, I've got a test role that I've got three people in just because I found examples in all three languages. So here's Dennis's alt that's in Japanese. 
Um, here's Narita's that's in Korean, and here's Lucky's that's in Chinese. So all of these, because they have localized names, we show their actual username off to the side. So, you know, I know, <laughs> damn it, Viv. Um, and then for like things like where we know their names and they, or they match up, you know, we don't, we don't change that. Um, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Viv. Boom headshot. Anyway. Um, so team, so everything below custom roles here, these are all like generated by Firebot. So these are all roles that we know about and that we assign when Firebot starts or when we're checking someone's roles. Active chat user, we check that whenever we see who's an active user. Team roles, whenever we start up Firebot and someone like you log in, we, uh, we, we go in and, and pull someone's teams. So, um, so yeah. So now we, we show like basically everywhere in the UI where we show a username. Hi, Perry. Uh, met your monthly quota pay you. No. Um, actually Viv, I will double your current mod salary. No, you know what? No, today's your lucky day. I am tripling your current mod salary. Congratulations. Um, but yeah, basically anywhere where we have, like here's Dennis's alt again in the viewer list, in the viewer database. Uh, there it is, like with the localized display name and his normal username, we show that now. And then like for Dennis's normal name, because it's the same, we don't show the other name. Like it's just, it's just Dennis on the internet, all lowercase, same thing. Um, cat, what's going on, buddy? What's the scoop? Just going over the new stuff and then uh, beta we're about to release. Um, we also added a new user display name variable to show either the display name like this or in like like the localized display name or the one that is all formatted fancy like that. Now, again, we'll go over username change, like the, the big, we'll go into details in a few minutes, but we'll, let's just go through the notes right now. Uh, chat messages from Firebot, both streamer and bot accounts will now send via Twitch's REST API instead of IRC. We talked about this earlier, but this reduces one of the IRC connections that we have and will be more reliable for sending messages on chat, okay? From Firebot. Uh, all viewer roles now track users by user ID instead of username and display name. I know we put it up there, but we, I wanted to add it here just to kind of reiterate that. Uh, the user slash username variables now return a username, not a display name. Uh, we'll go over the differences in just a minute. User ID name has been deprecated because that is now superseded by these. Um, update channel reward effect. I know a lot of folks had been asking for this because they wanted to be able to do some math on their costs of their channel rewards. We now allow variables in the update channel reward effect. Now, if you put something invalid that is not a number after it evaluates, it will still not work, but we, don't, uh, we will allow you to use variables in the field now. Paley's updating. Oh, nice. I saw the uh, the patch. They got finished with maintenance and everything earlier. The shit whisper issue. Uh, no, the whisper issue will continue, CKY, because that's different. Whispers are still treated differently. It's still all completely different. Start playing Paley on Valentine's Day. It's, it's, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, let's see. Uh, we know that we've got a lot of issues with like Twitch being wonky about logging in and stuff. So we now have it set up to where if we have an unrecoverable issue with your creds, like we try to refresh and it doesn't work. We are like, sorry, we pop a message that says, Hey, your account's fucked up. Please log in again. Okay. We let you know immediately instead of like just letting it kind of sit in the log and not work. 
So we actually pop that immediately to let folks know. Um, we've also updated the chat settings UI. So chat settings here, not a whole lot of big changes, but you know, just cleaning up a little bit, moving things off to the sides for everything. It's just, just a little, you know, little tweaks here and there. Nothing, nothing too like wild. Um, so just a little cleaner. We like it. I like it. Uh, let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> uh, the create clip effect. Previously, the way that the create clip effect worked was when you create a clip, it waits for the length of the clip to proceed to the next effect. That only happens now if you have it set to display the clip on an overlay and you either explicitly set the option or you haven't selected a wait option yet. We've, we've added a wait option. So I'll give you a, a little look-see here. So create clip, uh, show clip and overlay. And for the show, we tell it to wait video for video to finish, just like for the play video effect. So if you have this set, or if you have an existing create clip effect that you haven't set that with, then it will wait for it to play before proceeding to the next effect. That way, just a little backwards compatibility. Yeah, you can have uh, you can have it do that. So what we do is we create the clip and then we run a little loop in the background just to check to make sure it works. And there's a I think there's a timeout on it, but we uh, we basically like wait for the little loop to run. We just we just check the clips every second or so just to say, hey, we got new clips. We got new clips. Yes, no, okay, and then we move forward. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so yeah, so we set that up to only wait to play the next effect if you have it set to play in the overlay and you have it selected for the wait option. Uh, Dennis asked for this one, convert to JSON. He wanted a way to pretty print JSON for storing in files and stuff. I think that's a great thing, so... We added an option to convert to JSON to pretty print the output. Um, also, custom scripts are now signaled to stop when Firebot is closed so they can do perform any cleanup. So like disconnecting from things gracefully, sh like freeing up any like memory on their own or whatever kind of shit they want to do, whatever. Mm. Clips on mobile suck. Yeah, clips on mobile is, is not great. A lot of stuff on mobile is not great. So yeah. A lot of good improvements there. And then we got several fixes. Um, CKY added in a fix for whenever we uh, get that disconnected from chat message. That actually goes away fully when we reconnect to chat. So that's uh, that message shouldn't like stay up forever like it has been in some instances. Um, if you have a permission or a role check or something where you're looking specifically for tier two or tier three subscribers, um, that wouldn't work previously. Now it does. Uh, we fixed an issue. Uh, Dennis actually put in a fix for this because he had been working with the quick action stuff some recently, um, where if you renamed a quick action, it would say there was an error. There wasn't really, but we weren't getting a good signal back from the back end to let us know that it was fixed or that it was updated. So we just fixed it so it doesn't, you know, there's no, there's no erroneous error message now. Um, so yeah. Uh, create clip effect. We have an effect output for it. Never save the effect output for the clip URL. Just didn't work. We fixed that. That's done now. Um, also, we had fixed the tooltip in the custom variable section of the create clip effect, but then it got a little wonky. So, like, it sometimes with the the UI wouldn't display correctly. We got that fixed up well uh, as well. So that's all squared away now. So create clip effect as a whole is in a much better place. Um, had an issue I found with the autocomplete on the dashboard, uh, where you're typing in the chat box and you're doing autocomplete for like users or emotes or stuff like that. And that might break in some instances that's been fixed. Uh, Dennis found in, uh, the usage examples for both the text pad start and text pad in variables. If you want to add stuff to the front or the back of a string of text, um, the usage examples were, had, uh, some copy pasta stuff in there that was wrong so that got fixed um 
And then our buddy OMS, Old Man Sethus, he actually pinged me last weekend because he was having an issue with one of his overlays, and it turns out he had an ampersand in the name of his overlay. And because of the way we handle overlays, well, that's busted. So we fixed that. So that's not a problem anymore. Uh, and finally, we fixed an issue where the main window wasn't fully closing correctly behind the scenes. That doesn't really do anything for like most users, but for like development stuff, plugins, things like that, that could cause some issues. So that's been fixed now. So you know whether Jason want to find the minimal stuff you're currently using. I'm just not that familiar with it. Um, I mean, it's it depends on you know if you how comfortable you feel with it. I some of the stuff I just store in like in individual files. So let's go to my stream files and I'll show you. So for example, I have a few text files uh, for like the last subscriber. I store this in a file. Okay, so Script Warrior was the last person to do a sub earlier. So I store the last subscriber in a text file so I can show it on things like the uh, the overlay down there and like keep track of that long term. Um, yeah, user metadata is good for a lot of that stuff too. Yep. Um, then there are other things like my, like I've got my Zunderstream config, which has a bunch of stuff about my stream, like my schedule generator uh, data, things from like my co-working, my, like any promo image that I might be showing on stream, the news bar, again, the stuff that's like down there at the bottom, what says like full schedule, that's, that stuff is here. That's that's powered by a file, a JSON file. So, you know, it depends on what you're trying to do. Some of it I store in just a text file. Some of it I store in JSON. What what CKY? You didn't know I was storing stuff in JSON for my stream config. Hmm. Yeah, I store it in JSON, and then I'll pull in the custom variable for like. The news bar stuff, I'll just store the news bar data in the custom variable and use that during the news bar run. It doesn't pull it all the time. So, yeah, it's fine. Fine. Hmm. Yeah, that's my, uh, that's my admin tool, CKY. That's the stuff that I, like, I use to manage, like, my specific stream stuff. Um... I just store like I, I had been storing that stuff in all in custom variables and I pulled it out of custom variables and now store it in a JSON config file. Um, so that JSON config file actually syncs up multiple places so that it always has like the, the same data no matter where I'm, what instance of Firebot I'm running from. That's, that's something that I sync up, but that works because there's no like authentication stuff in there. But yeah, Kat was saying how they want to use uh, JSON for some of the, the stuff that they're doing. Keep it all stuff in all in one place. Yep, yep. That's what I do with a lot of mine. Um, let's see, what else we got? Uh, Yeah, that's pretty much it for this version. I mean, we put out, did you, did that work? That's good. Okay, let's go back to, that's, that's the old one. When did it, when did the assets update? 12 minutes ago. Perfect. Okay, so this has the updated stuff. Installer, new package, all that great stuff. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this as a release. We're gonna target V5 branch for this. Uh, this is gonna be set as a pre-release. And... Need to copy this stuff. All right, publish. All right, beta one is out the door. 
Um, go load the Firebot update. Beautiful. I'm going to go and grab. I'm going to grab one and just load that one. Okay. It's five, six, two, beta one. Five, six, two. <gasps> Pingu! Hi, Pingu. How you, dear? I love you. I hope you're doing wonderful. First time chat of the welcome message is just a letter to another new. Generic welcome message for returning chatter suit. Nice. Nice cat. That's pretty cool. There's a piece of their own custom welcome message, and one person in particular has a whole effect list. That's pretty neat. That's neat. I like that. Alright, let's see. Well, I guess I don't need I guess I don't need that. Let's uh Nice, okay. Alright. We're gonna I'm gonna open the wiki article. We, again, we will go over that in just a second. Um all right, beautiful. Uh We'll go over the nitty gritty details in just a second. Where the heck is it? Oh, there it is. Hey, what are you doing? Edge, please. Thank you, Edge. <clears throat> oh, this guy again. Why does he keep showing up? Nice. I love it. Thank you, Cat. That means that means a ton to us. It really does. Um, we we put a lot of we put a lot of love into this, and we try to make it as best as we can for everybody. And we know that's tough, but we do we do the best we can. All right, let's go grab. Copy link, put it in here. Okay. Guess I can move this. Ooh, ungroup you. Oof. All right, good. Uh, now let's go. You know what I'm gonna do? Do this. Where's my edit button? Oh, there it is. Uh, no, this is better done in VS. Uh, let's go and we will do like this and we will go Beautiful. Now we can go and just drop this in here. There we go. Perfect. Mm. Perry has some amazingness when he can stream. Yeah, that's true. Perry does all kinds of wild shit too, you know. When he's not working like 312 hour weeks in the snow uphill both ways. I'm only slightly kidding about that. Perry works like a ridiculous amount. Perry's like, I'm bored. I want to do stuff. 
I'll just go to work. <laughs> All right. All righty. I think we're good. Uh, there's the note for. Okay. Localized display names. The wiki article. Uh, I think we're good. The only average on around four hundred hours a year. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Four hundred hours a month, probably. Fly him random locations for a month at a time. Only thing he can do is work. Yeah. Perry's like, listen, I work like 90 hours this week and I'll do it for like four months and then I take six months off. That's which is actually what he does. All right. Yeah, I'm going to leave both of those there. That's fine, I think. Uh, this is 5.6.2 beta. Okay. This work. Link work. Link works. Link works. Link works. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, let's go and ship it and send it and publish it and firm. All right. Five, six, two, zero, beta one. All right. So let's talk a little more in detail about how all this stuff works, right? Because I know there's some questions like, well, why are you doing it like this? Why are you changing it? Etc. It's very, very good questions. Let's go over it. So, like I said, in 5.6.2, we, we've changed how we handle both some of the username variables and how we handle roles, more importantly, under the hood, okay? To better understand why we do this, let's talk about how Twitch stores user data. Twitch identifies users one of three ways. There's a user ID, which is something that most people never see, okay? Uh, it basically looks like a number from Twitch's side. It's basically just every single person has like a number that's associated with them, this, this ID, okay? <clears throat> no matter how many times you change your, your username, your display name, email address, any of that stuff, as long as it is the same account, it will always have the same user ID, always, okay? User ID is what we call immutable. It, is, it cannot be changed. Then there's the username. Now that's the one that you log into Twitch with, okay? It's <clears throat> usually all lowercase, letters, numbers, underscores. Um, so for like CKY, it's C underscore under, C underscore K underscore Y, but it's all lowercase, okay? That was, that's CKY's username. Dennis, Dennis is Dennis on the internet, but again, just all lowercase because that's how usernames are, they work on Twitch. Now you can change them occasionally, but you can't change them like, I think it's once every like 60 days or something like that, you can change your username, something like that, I forget. Um, if you want to, Dennis, sure. Then there's display names. Now display names, uh, and I didn't even know you couldn't use spaces, I thought it was, like, or that you could use spaces, I didn't realize that, but most of what people do is different capitalizations. Okay, so like CKY, his letters are all capitalized. Dennis's, Dennis's individual words are all capitalized. Um, just a stylistic sort of thing. However, in some languages, Japanese, Korean, and Chinese, Twitch allows you to have what's called a localized display name, which means that you can have a... Um, you can have a uh, a like native language display name for whatever for one of those languages. <clears throat> you think you can replace your underscores with spaces? Oh, that's fine. It treats it like it is, it'll treat it like weird anyway. Well, it'll 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 handle it in the uh, 
Oh, you can't. Okay. Maybe, maybe certain like special accounts can have spaces and others can't. I don't know. Yeah, like Square Enix, they're a company, so like they can have it. Yeah, you know, change your display name, only the capitalization of it. Okay, so there, there's a perfect example. There's Dennis's alt account. Now, if you look on Twitch, okay, um, and let's see if I can, let me just pop open chat real quick. So, on Twitch, you can see in the chat where it has the localized, the Japanese characters, and then in parentheses, it's got Dennis's actual username so that you know how it looks, right? So, you can't, but, ah, see, there you go, Gadget. You can't tag people like that. Now, I can go, it doesn't work. It doesn't freaking work. Is that what Twitch tries to do? Yes, but it, like, it freaks out about it on the back end. Like, nothing works about it on the back end. It's so ridiculous. Now, in Firebot, we display it basically the way that Twitch displays it now uh, with the with the update. So you can see here in the Firebot dashboard, here it is in the viewer list, exactly the same way with the localized and then the like this the original username in parentheses. Same thing over here in the chat feed, but to Perry's test point, you can see how Perry replied to it and it shows like the reply with the, just the localized username. We honor that and do the same thing in Firebot. So we only show the display name because that's the way that Twitch shows it in chat. Again, we try to be as consistent with Twitch display as we can to make it a sort of one-to-one -one experience, right? Um, so that's the way we, we, we try to, you know, that's the way we're trying to do that. Um, now, does Dennis off the internet work like that? Uh, maybe it doesn't, maybe like the native version of that doesn't work. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Now, both of them highlight for you? Okay, okay, well that's good. Changes their name, does Twitch tell you their previous name? No, Gadget. Twitch does not tell us someone's previous name, which brings us to the next point. This is great, okay? Now let's let's kind of go up, go through this, all right? So we've talked about the user ID, the username, and the user display name. Now in most cases, Firebot looks up viewers by either their ID or username. Because user IDs never change, Twitch will always return the same user account when the app searches by an ID. When we're looking up viewers by username in real time, especially like in chat, so if like on a chat message event, like if someone sends a chat message and then there's a chat message event and we look up the username based on that, like it's such a split second that it's not, they're not gonna have a chance to change their username between like the time that they actually send the chat message and the event fires in Firebot, right? So like it usually works fine because users don't, viewers don't change usernames often. Again, it's every 60 days. However, apps cannot directly look up a single user by their display name. But because most users have the same username and display name, again, minus capitalization, sending their display name in as a search criteria for the username works in most instances, okay? It's fine. Now, here's where things get a little weird, right? Yes, that's you you absolutely set me up, gadget. For most roles, so Firebot internal things like active chat user. Uh, let's go look at the roles again. Uh, active chat user for any Twitch roles like the streamer, moderator, VIPs, subscribers in their different tiers, known bots, and for team roles or people who are on official Twitch stream teams that are attached to their, their channel, these things are built dynamically, okay? So like at, at the very least, we build this stuff when people log in or they open Firebot, right? Um, or when someone enters chat we add them to the active chat users list, okay? When 
because we do all of this under the hood, it's not as big of a deal for us to manage that by user ID versus username, which is what we had been doing. For custom roles, custom roles are very different. Oh, it's fine, Gadget. I, I saw it. It's fine. I'm not... I'd, okay, fine. I'll, I'll fix it. God damn it. Damn you, Gadget. Um, <clears throat> now, for custom roles, because those are specific to every, every individual Firebot streamer, Every individual Firebot user has a different set of custom roles, right? And everybody's custom roles are different. Now you may be able to like, you may have like shared your a custom role via a setup, but everybody's custom roles are stored in their individual Firebot profiles, okay? So even if I were to go from here to my test profile or something else, I'm still going to have a different custom role than a set of custom roles than I would for um, another profile because they're all stored individually, okay? Now, the way that we were doing this in the past was we were storing the display name. We would go and you would add a viewer and we would look them up and I could go Ocarina of Tom, I go and add him and now he has already got that role. He's already in the list, right? But we would add him to the list just by his name. Was that a kitten? Kitten cat? Baby? Love came to say hi. Um, when we store by display name, a couple of problems happen. One, um, localized usernames don't work right. We either get false positives where it, like when comparing, it showed that somebody was in a role that they didn't have, or the reverse would happen where we would get false negatives and someone wouldn't be shown or like wouldn't evaluate to being in a role that they did have. Nice gadget. I like that. That's good. If you put that in Discord. Perfect. I love it. Absolutely perfect. <clears throat> um, so the problem presents itself with localized display names and if someone changes their username they're out of the role and we don't know because Twitch doesn't uh, because Twitch doesn't tell us when someone changes their username we just don't know the only way that we can do it is by having their user ID and looking that up, okay? So today, that means that the streamer, every time someone in one of their custom roles has, changes their name, their username, or their, dis, their localized display name, they have to go into every single one of their custom roles where that person has a, is part of that role, delete the old one, go search for and add the new one. That's a pain in the ass. It's not great. Okay. That's also not good for long-term management of the app. But the biggest thing is that's a pain in the ass for streamers to have to maintain. Like we've got enough shit to do as streamers. We don't need to be able to, we don't need to have to like manage that stuff too. When I add someone to a custom role, I expect that they stay in that custom role until I explicitly remove them, no matter what they do to their username or display name in the meantime. So what we do now is we have changed it to where in this version and above, Firebot will now track viewers in all roles by their user ID, which means custom roles have been stored in a new format. Now beforehand, again, we were storing just the let me see if I can go back. Where's yeah, we were storing go to my backups too. And I'll pull one from pull one from a couple weeks ago. Profiles, main profile, roles. Nope, that one's.
this the one prior? It's hard because I don't remember when I actually made the change. Nope. See, we changed the file name too so as not to fuck up the whole thing. Uh, maybe it's this one. There we go, there's one. Okay, so you can see here that we have, under the hood, we have the unique ID for the role, the name of the custom role, and all the viewers. And again, we're storing it by their display name, like it's the formatted version of their name, okay? Um. Oh yeah, gadget, like people have, I think that's a feature that we actually have open is to store like, history of usernames and display names um yeah like that twitch wasn't twitch wasn't happy about that uh like somewhere else was doing that i forget like who was doing that and twitch was like yeah we don't like that and don't do that if we're not giving you that data you really shouldn't be tracking that data um so yeah like some people change their names for privacy reasons and that's why that's one of the reasons why we haven't implemented it is because we don't want to do that. Um, <clears throat> all we care about is what someone's username and like display name is right now, right? Their user ID is not going to change. So, in the old custom role format, and close this. I don't need this anymore. In the old custom role format, we store viewers by their display name. Again, not great. But in a lot of instances, it's fine. In 5.6.2 and above, when we start Firebot, if we see that you have the old file, which is custom roles without a hyphen in the middle, we will add, we will migrate all of your people over so that we have their ID, their username, and their display name in the custom role so that we always know who they are, okay? Um... Well, yeah, resetting the idea, that's... Gadget, I think about it like this. The person as an entity is their user ID. That's how we know who they are. Changing someone's username is, I know this is, this is a very gross oversimplification, but an old username is like a dead name because we don't care what it is anymore. We still need to know that they are who they say they are, and the user ID allows us to verify that but we don't care what they called themselves yesterday or five years ago. We care about what they call themselves today. No, you're fine, Gadget. You're absolutely fine. You're absolutely fine. Yeah. Because, like, that's... If someone changes their username, they don't want to be associated with their old username anymore. They want to be associated with the name that they have chosen most recently, right? Um, so the ID lets us know that this is still this person but their username and display name is really more of a formality for us than anything else because this is all we care about is that ID, that numeric looking ID, okay? That's all we care about. Which also means that down here where we have people with localized usernames, we have their username, but we also have their localized name so that we can identify them this way as well, okay? Um, in the updated version of Firebot, when someone updates their username and display name, when you start Firebot, we actually go through and we validate that. So in the custom role manager, we go load custom roles. Then the last thing that we do after we load the custom roles, we refresh the data and we go through each one of the roles we grab the, like, the user IDs of everybody in the role, and we're just like, hey, just give us the list of everybody and, and put it back into the custom role with their updated name. So if, say, like Dennis was to go and change the display name for his alt account, and I closed and restarted Firebot, it would have the updated one because we refresh that every time we start Firebot to make sure that we have the most like up-to-date ones to display to the streamer, even though we don't use it under the hood. 
because we still want the streamer to have the best information that we can have, right? Um, I see you. I see you, Grandpa. I see you. And you fucking Bellatro. Watching you. Zara, stop instigating. God damn it. Um, but we want to make sure that the streamer knows who that person is. So we keep that up to date with every startup of Firebot to make sure that, you know, we have that. Because, again, people aren't changing usernames often. They're not. But that does happen occasionally. And we want custom roles to continue to work. And we want the streamer to know who these people are to make sure that they know them, right? Okay. I think it's a local cache after the initial startup. Uh, it's, well, it's not just a local cache. It's, I mean, it's, it's our database of the actual roles itself so that we know who's in these roles. Okay. Because like we, Twitch doesn't store custom role data. That's a, that's a purely a Firebot concept. So we still have to know who's in there. The username and display name really is just sort of a local cache of that. But the ID is the actual thing that we care about. Right. So we don't need to keep the names. We don't have to. But we do it so that we have them presented to the user, to the, the streamer, so that we know, like, who's here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Wait, what do you mean I haven't met Perry's friend? The person changes their name daily. Yeah, well. Now Perry won't have to worry about it. As long as it's the same account, doesn't matter anymore. Uh, but anyway, that's what, uh, that's kind of how we manage custom roles now. If they have a localized display name gadget, I think they can change it much more frequently. Uh, let me, let me see. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh no, localized display names can be only made once every 60 days. Okay. So they display name changes can be made without cooldown. Localized display name changes can be made once every 60 days and username changes can be made once every 60 days. But if you have a non-localized display name, like most of us here in chat today, yeah, the display name is, for the most part, only the capitalization. For people who are not in Japanese, Chinese, or Korean language setting, the display name is just capitalization. That's it. That's really it. Yeah, see, customize capitalization for your display, for your username. Now for me, obviously I don't have mine set to anything because mine's all lowercase like my username is, so it doesn't matter. But what if someone changes the username and the first time chat message detects the ID on the role? Shouldn't that update the username on the role or will it still know the role because of the ID? No, it, because roles under the hood, we when you check for someone's role, also welcome in Lightning, good to see you. Uh, when you we check for someone's role under the hood, we use just the ID now in, in Firebot 562 and above. So, um, like the, the, the first time chat message, if we have like someone who comes in like you, for instance, this is a first time chat. This comes from Twitch. This is just a tag on the message from Twitch that we know it's someone that's the first time. That's it. Now, if we do some kind of like role stuff, and we try to add someone to a role that's already on the role, then it's just not going to do anything because they're already in that role. But if someone's all like, if if someone goes and changes their stuff and they're all like, we do a role check because we're going to be checking by ID, then it doesn't matter anymore because it's they're already in that role and their ID is the thing that matters. So. Um, again, if, if they change, cause like, can you trigger a first time chat? Uh, you cannot. Okay. Let me see. You can simulate, you can simulate the first time chat event. 
you can't simulate the first time chat message inside of the dashboard. We cannot simulate this, but we can simulate this, okay? So what happens is when we get this first time chat from someone, and Lightning, thank you, because now you've just made it where it works out. This is great. Um, we, we mark the message with this flag that says this is a first time chat, but we also trigger an event to say that someone has chatted in the channel for the very first time. You can simulate this all day long, just like you can with any other event in Firebot, but this you cannot fake. You cannot fake the first time chat message inside of the chat feed, because that is literally just from what Twitch gives us. Oh, the pseudo roll? Oh, I gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I mean, you can pick it up that way. Really, what you can do is like, if you wanna have like some pseudo roll for people who are first time or not first time, what you could do is you could have someone when they when they like they have the first time chat event if that event triggers from twitch because we that like even if firebot like say say i've been streaming for 10 years right and, and someone chats in my channel they don't come back for nine of those years and in that time i have started using firebot it may be their first time coming in since i've started using firebot but it is not their first time ever in the channel so this event won't trigger because Twitch is like, they've been here before. It's been 10 years, but they've been here before. Okay. So what you could do is for people that are truly new, if you get this event from Twitch that says they're a first time chatter, you could then add them to a custom role that says it's like returning viewer or whatever you want to call it so that you know that they've been there before. Um, and then, you know, that kind of thing. Or you could just respond to the event here. You know what I mean? And just say, hey, when I have like on someone's first time chat, have like a welcome message or whatever you want to do. So. Hello. Here's a kitty. Uh, so let's go back to the update. So. Again, for most of the under the hood roles, the stuff that's like Twitch roles, Firebot roles, and team roles, we track that stuff dynamically, okay? Um, Twitch roles, we get like either when a chat message comes in or we check their roles, like if it's during like an event or something like that. Active chat user, we know who's active in chat or not, you know? Um, uh, and then teams, of course, we pull the teams when the streamer logs in and we can identify them by their ID and we know who's on that list because we pull the list of the team members. Um, but custom roles, because they're a little different, we did have to update it to where we start tracking by ID now. Um, So that basically is the big thing about role tracking. Um, we will migrate the first time. Uh, we will let you know if something happened, something went wrong. Um, after you update, please verify that your stuff is there for all of your custom roles. If there's someone that isn't, like if they have an invalid username, they won't migrate. Like if they have changed their username since you've added it to their, added them to your custom role, um, they are not going to migrate. You're going to have to add them again, just like you do today. However, if you add them after the update, then they'll be fine because by that point we will be tracking them by user ID and we will know at startup what their current username and display name is, right? Um, so... Anybody that's broken in a custom role today is going to be broken when we try to migrate them. It's just the way it is. And we will log people, like we'll put in the log to say, hey, you know, XYZ people didn't migrate. Just so like if you have people that you want to keep track of, there will be a log message for it. And this, we go into detail here about how that all works. 
Now, because we're changing a lot of this stuff with tracking by user ID versus username and displaying all that stuff, we also made some changes to the variables, okay? Prior to, to this version, this upcoming version, hey, Dragons, how you doing? Um, prior to this version, username, user, same variable, returns back, or functionally it's the same, returns back their display name. Okay, that's what Firebot does right now. That becomes a problem when we have like the occasional space in someone's display name, like with Square Enix or whatever, or with localized display names, because those don't correlate directly back to the actual username. So we did add the user ID name variable later to kind of help account for that, but we know there was some confusion about it. Um, and we wanted to kind of get like a line better with the way that Twitch names their stuff. Okay. So in five, six, two and above user and username will at return the actual username. So like the lowercase version, like C like the, the lowercase C underscore lowercase K underscore lowercase Y. Um, However, we know that people still need display names for stuff like chat messages or overlays or things like that. So we have added a user display name variable to restore that functionality. Now for most people using user or username today, the only thing that you're gonna notice that's different is the fact that people's stuff that like in chat messages and um, that you like generate from the bot or overlay stuff, it's gonna be lower, all lowercase, okay? So that's not gonna break anything for those folks. It's just gonna look different. This also means that user and username is gonna be better for looking up things when we need to get things like, if you wanna get like their profile picture URL or things like that, you can use username or user instead of user ID name, shit like that, okay? User display name is purely for display purposes. That's why it's a display name. So if you want to put it in chat and say, hey, go check out, you know, person's channel, you can use user display name for their name, and then you can use username for their, uh, for the actual URL. This also means that user ID name has become redundant. Like we don't need it anymore because user and username do that functionality now. So that has been deprecated. It's not going away anytime soon, but it will be removed in a future version, most likely version six, if not before. Um, but at the like at the latest in version six, user ID name is going away altogether. Um, <clears throat> but user ID name will continue to function for the foreseeable future. So it's not gonna break any of your stuff today. Again, the most that you're gonna notice is that your display names are gonna be lowercase or in the case of localized display names, username is gonna give you the username versus the localized version. So user ID name still there, just works or just, you don't have to use it anymore. Um, so again, there's a summary down at the bottom here. This is basically the TLDR. So all roles are gonna be tracking by user ID now. Uh, custom roles are gonna be moved over to uh, the new format. Um, user and username will return the actual username. User display name is gonna be the thing that you use to show the display name, the formatted version or the localized version. And user ID name, not gonna use it anymore. Deprecated, still there, don't use it. Use user or username instead. So that's pretty much it. Um, again, a couple of breaking things in here, but nothing like terribly, like nothing wild. Like it's just getting lined up with the way that like Twitch names their stuff. And a lot of other folks too. Like a user ID for use on functions on a future version. Uh, we could, uh, let me see. What do we have in there now? Variables built in. <clears throat> Is user already, uh, already a thing? I thought it was, I want to double check. So there we go. There we go, there's user ID. Um, and if you're using user ID with something that has like an event attached to it, if we already have the user ID, then we'll just return what we have. Otherwise we will look it up by username, which also means if you use like 
dollar sign username in there, it will actually look up and return their user ID. We, uh, we do also search the viewer database first to see if there's anything in the viewer database, kind of like prevent having to look on, on Twitch. Um, 296 variables. That sounds oddly correct. Hmm. Installing an update for a long while now. Uh, Kat, did you do it from, did you do it from here, from the updates tab? In progress, oh yeah, that's, that's a thing that we're working on. That's on our list of things to fix. That one we know is, is messed up. Um, you know. Yeah. You did it successfully from the download? Okay. I added some, what did, what did I add? Oh yeah, right, because I added user display name and then, yeah, I added user display name and you were working on the chat color one. So, all right. The 5620 beta one is out, which is awesome. Love that. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, really excited to see like, um, folks using this beta. Uh, I wonder how many people have installed it so far. Let's go see. Uh, where's the... We have... We got one! I love it. But yeah, the... Uh, the the beta login the beta download thing it's you nice nice uh hey grandpa did you have um did you have like legacy custom roles um build anything in firebot for a while no that's fair that's fair oshi and i mean listen you'll eventually get it anyway you know we'll once it's once we're confident that it's in a really good state for everyone we'll push it out to everyone and then you know you won't have to do anything so um, totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. And we understand betas aren't for everyone, but we do try to encourage as many folks as that feel comfortable with it, uh, downloading it and using it because we need that feedback. We don't know what's broken in everybody's instance and every bit of feedback that we can get. So that we can, it, it, it helps us out a ton. So their buffers are empty by default. Okay. Okay. Uh, cool. Let's see what else we got going on here. Do 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 do. Okay, I think we're all good. Um. Yep, beta's out. Uh, I can go back to Where's my gist. Okay, that's all good. Uh, that's the five, six, one notes. That was oof. Well, that was a big one too. Okay, we can get rid of that. And cool, everything in my gist that I care about. Um, that's all here. We're all here. Okay, great. Uh, so yeah, I know that the other thing that I do want to I do want to fix like the download of beta stuff from inside the app. I'm not sure why it's busted, but I do want to figure that out at some point, and that's going to be sort of a pain in the ass. I I feel. If you run into anything that I haven't already seen, it will be rare. That's true. CKY puts shit through its paces. Holy shit, does he put our stuff through the paces. And we appreciate it. Both him and Dennis both. 
Listen, Grandpa, every little bit helps. Like, in, that's the thing. Even if it's a little bit, if you notice something, let us know. Um, I'm going to go set up a new thread real quick. Let's see, copy a link. I'm just posting the uh, the link for the beta uh, feedback. Cool. <clears throat> On the control audio via OBS. Uh, through your earbuds, apparently made the sound high pitched like it's playing through helium. Is that a known thing? Uh, makes sense. And look at it again. No, and that's that's gonna be a that's gonna be a thing with OBS and how your audio monitoring is set up, Oshi. So that's not like when you play something through the overlay, we just send it to the browser source and OBS handles all the rest. Um, so if things are being weird in your OBS sound settings, that's going to be something in, in OBS specifically. I don't have that. Um, and I like my overlays I have set to control the audio through OBS and I monitor here. Um, so that's not a known Firebot issue that I know of, and I'm also on a beta version of OBS. Um, so, yeah. Someone else in the Discord may ex have experienced that. I I haven't, and I don't know anything that's going on. That I can't set required action, additional R count back to zero on subcommands after it's been set to one. Let's see here. I have I have a theory about this. Uh, adjusted min args. Okay. Zero after all. Oh. 
Let's see if we can figure it out. Maybe this could be something we could put into the uh, the next beta. Oh, save it. Come back. Okay. Save it. Okay. Come back. Save it. Okay. That's a good call. Uh, no, let me, let me, give me a second, CKY, because I want to see. On min R exchanged, if is it greater than zero. Oh, that's. I wonder if it's saving it but not refreshing it. Because that could be a thing too. Um, it could just not be refreshing on the front end. Sub commands. Minimum args 2. Um, okay. Nope. I think that should fix it. And some commands, so it's not broken, just odd. Uh, I think that's a good workaround for now, but we should be able to fix that. Greater than zero, and then we do. Yep. Uh, let's go. Zero. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop and I'm going to restart the bot. Okay. <clears throat> but no, that's a good catch. That's a good catch, Grandpa. That's something I've never run into. I've never run into it. Hey, kid cat. What you doing? Are you walking all over my... I want you to be a lap kid. Laptop kid. Get your own little laptop to be laptop. Getting emails like now we prepare. Also order any toys. Create some chicken spreadsheets. Need more pets and snuggles. I think you do. I mean I think we should get her a kitty laptop. one okay so let's go back go back to our test command all right all right we have required additional arm count save it okay two let's save it back to zero back to zero Back to zero. There we go. See? See, Grandpa? That's it. That's that's all we need, man. We just need that feedback. Fix commands. Allow subcommand args to be reset. Reset to zero. And... It'll be in the next beta. <laughs> Not yet, Oshi. There's a... Uh, listen, there's still a couple of things we're cooking up for the next beta. Home with a live bug fix. Listen, we... <laughs> Welcome to Mudka's Meat Hut. Home of the mug of meat. 
Pirkan. Oui. Yeah, you want to get on the desk? Want to get up? Uppy? Yeah, you want uppies? Come here, you got them here for uppy. Here. Come here. Oh, okay. Then you can't get uppies. You're not really, this should be a pretty easy fix if you're interested. It's on the issue tracker. All right. Uh, what you got, Dennis? Is it, oh, is it the new one you just filed? Here we got toggle connection effect for non-Twitch connection fails when not logged into streamer account. You try to toggle when well, the streamer account is not logged in here and pops up saying so you must sign into your streamer to script before connecting. Um, no, I'm going to say no. Uh, and the reason why is because everything that we do is reliant on Twitch connection in Firebot V5. So we have to have Twitch connection in order to do everything else. This is Ranger Lever on Colonel O'Brien. Wow, Fritz, that's a throwback, pal. I'm going to say that Twitch connection is the home of the live bug rejection. God. Um, yeah, you have to be... I, I'm... I'm going to say that this is this is no because like Twitch connections required. Uh what the fuck Fritz? <laughs> it's supported but not if I do it through the effect and Firebot start event. Everything you ask reject, you get no. Yeah, but then we give it to you anyway, CKY. Supported, but not if you do it through the effect in a Firebot started event. Uh, does it, I mean, does that... Why do we come confirm twice? You can enable the connection properly in the UI. Like through here, or when you just click the button. Let's let me go look at something. We shouldn't allow either one if you're not connect if you're not signed into your streamer account. I'm barn open up the modal, okay. I don't I'm not connected to stream elements, so Why? Why? I mean, I yeah, I know there's a, I know there's like, if you have stream elements set up, you can do that. But like, why is that checkbox a thing? But Twitch is integral. Which isn't an integration, it's core. It's left over from oh, 
Um, I, mm, I just, uh, oh yeah, I do too, Oshi. Like, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Well, let me go look at the effect. Let's go look at the effect. Close everybody. We had a chat and a mix play. Oh, you had separate connections for chat and mix play. Oh, I see. But we don't have that because Twitch is all or nothing. Uh, Oshi, because some people don't want it. Also, probably think we should make a a connection at some point or a, an option, a setting. Um. Oh. Yeah, so, hey, Dennis. Dennis, can you, uh, can you, uh, test this on? Can you test this on, uh, 561? Because that's not a beta specific issue. I know it's, I know you found it in the beta. Well, uh, to CKY to Oshi's point, why isn't it a thing that like Firebot just does that on its own? Why do we have to set up an event for it? Or why do we have to, you know, why do we have to set up a thing for it? Why isn't it just like an option down here and be like, general, connect to Twitch on startup? It's fine. It's, it's not a big deal. It's not that big of a deal. Anyway, Dennis, can you validate that this is in 561? Because I guarantee it is. Okay. So, what I'm seen here is the way that we do this we do this two different ways we do this two different ways so this is we should instead of doing it like this we should do it in a loop and do these game down to time that wouldn't surprise me one bit if it was just like a a thing like we don't we just don't have time to add this right now and it just we had a a, a workaround that was fine and how oh, services Dennis, why don't you just download it, buddy? Aren't you on Linux? Can't you just extract the to a folder? Dennis, why are you making it difficult? All right, let's see.
He's run it. Fucking Linux nerd. Well, no, he's only using Master Branch because I told him to check on current release, and he's not downloading it. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to test on the release. Because he put it in, and he marked it as a thing with the beta, which, sure, technically it's the beta, but I don't want this to be marked as a, like, I, I wanted to make sure it's validated on, like, a prod release. Yeah, neither am I, CKY. I'm in, there, I'm in there for one reason and one reason alone, to push from V5. Or on Windows, you would do it this way. Windows is one thing. But Linux, like, there's not even an installer for Linux. It's just a fucking, like, G-zip. It's a tarball. Nice gadget. Gadget's picking up what the music's putting down. <laughs> Okay, um, so here's my thought on this is This is weird. Oh, right, because, okay. Okay, here's... Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, man, I just, hmm, hmm, okay. How dare you, Dennis? How, how dare you? All right, thanks for updating the version. I just want to make sure it doesn't get like flagged as a beta specific thing. Um, I want to see what the, I want to see what the behavior is. No, no, it's fine, Dennis. I mean, I get what's going on. The issue is you can come into the panel, turn individual things on or off, but with the effect, you can't. Uh, need, eh. Might close that. What's going on here? Anything going on in here right now? This is done for now. Yeah, that's sidebar controlled. Where's the connection button? Connection button, what do you do? On connection, click. Integration service, toggle connection for integration. And let's see what this does.
Oh, we just fire the event. Oh. I guess I could put a toggle. No, but that's that only works for integrations. It doesn't work for the chat connection. This is bigger than just a small fix, so, uh, mm, this is not a today thing. And besides, it's been there a while, and, yeah. Alright, but in the meantime, I'm calling it there for right now. Uh, I'm gonna go take a break for a little bit and hang out with Bean and Loaf. Yeah, that's you, baby. You're the Loaf. I said, hang out with Loaf. She goes, meow. Ah, uh, meow. You want Bear to come give you some pets? No, you want some pets and some snuggles? Okay, we will do it. Uh, and then I will be back tonight with some more shooty fights. I'm doing, uh, no, CKY, no, no more. That's it. Firebot Friday is done. Uh, we got a lot accomplished today, though. Um, so I'm going to be back in... In a little less than three hours, could be playing some Fortnite. Uh, I might see if I can con tug into playing some more with me. I don't know, probably not, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, I will be here. Uh, I hope to see y'all in just a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, let's get out of here. Let's figure out who we are going to go raid. Let's see. Let's pull the old management window down here so I can see what's going on. Who's doing things and stuff? I already know where we're going. Uh, listen, we're going to go see our friend Lissa. Lissa's playing Turnip Boy Robs a Bank. Uh, I love that it played again because I restarted the bot. It's, I restarted the bot, Viv. It's fine. It's fine. All right, we're going to go see Lissa. Uh, Lissa is... Lissa's playing Turnip Boy Robs a Bank. Yeah, and... This is going to be great. Okay. Uh, so, hey, thank you all again for hanging out. Uh, I will see you all in just a little bit for Friday Night Shooty Fights. Uh, thank you all again so, so much for being here. It was another great Firebot Friday, as always. Um... Until, uh, well, that's beautiful. Anyway, uh, until I see you in just a little bit, uh, well, whatever. I'll see you in just a little bit. It's fine. Ended it on the Rickroll. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's appropriate. Beautiful. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Bye. <laughs>